Hey everyone, welcome to Saturday Night Popcorn. This is Jason. And this is Kai, and we have another great discussion for you today. Uh, the movie of the day is actually kicking off our new monthly uh, movie watching theme. We're doing action movie action movie month for uh, May 2024. And the first movie we chose was Die Hard 1 from 1988. So if you haven't seen it, give me a spoiler warning. It's not new, but still want to just give you a heads up before we get into it. Yeah, and we started off with a banger, but uh, we want to kind of like always start off with the uh, with a summary of the film. So I'm going to read that off right now. Uh, in the action-packed thriller Die Hard, NY- NYPD officer John McClane finds himself at the wrong place at the wrong time during a Christmas vacation in Los Angeles. Intending to reconcile with his estranged wife, Holly, at her company's ho- holiday party, McClane's plans are abruptly interrupted when a su- group of sophisticated terrorists led by the cunning Hans Gruber uh, seize control of the Nakatomi Plaza skyscraper. With the building locked down and hostages taken, including Holly, McLean becomes the expect, unexpected lone wolf, navigating the high rise, high rises dangers to throw athwart the terrorist's uh, heist. Outnumbered and outgunned, he relies on his wit and grit to disrupt the meticulously planned uh, operation, communicate with the outside world, and confront the uh, the villains face to face. As the night escalates, McLean battles not only the terrorists, but also the skepticism of the authorities outside. With time running out and stakes skyrocketing, he must save the hostages and reunite with his wife, all while delivering his own brand of justice to those <laughs> underestimating the determination, the determination of a New York City cop. Yes, and I think so, that's like a very fitting summary. <laughs> so I have two questions right off the bat. Mm-hmm. The first one is, is this considered wrong place, wrong time, or right place, wrong time? Right? I Because in my notes, that's funny that came up in the description, because like in my notes, <laughs> I have right place, wrong time, and I put a question mark. Like, that is like the right place he should be, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or unless he believes the right place he should be has always been New York City, because... The the his uh his uh cat his limo driver was like, weren't you? You're just trying to figure out if your wife wouldn't make it, and then she moves back. <laughs> <home>. <laughs> so I guess yeah, right place, wrong time, definitely. Yeah. It was definitely the wrong time, definitely uh, wrong for time. sure. <laughs> but I think right place, like he had the special skills that were needed to defeat these uh, these guys. Even Holly, his wife. The moment this thing all ha- all happens and she becomes a hostage, she's like, mm-hmm. John McClane is going to do his mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> I'm safe. Like, John is here. I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> uh, so that was the first question. The mm-hmm. second question, which a lot of people have probably mentioned and talked about is, is Die Hard a Christmas movie or a summer movie? I I I... I would definitely watch it on Christmas. Like we've seen some like shitty Christmas movies yeah, in terms have. of like, yeah. there's ones that are like just very gimmicky and everything. Yeah. There's some good ones. And I think this is a definite good one where it's like, you can watch it on Christmas and still feel the the Christmas spirit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, cause they, they kind of toy with it a little bit. They kind of toy with the fact that it's during Christmas, but this was released in July of 88. So I guess it it's makes like sense where the they, they were like, yeah, like we know, we know this is an action movie. So yeah. like I, back then, I feel like back then, especially when we were younger in the nineties and stuff, movies came out at like a definitive time. Like they knew yeah. summer movies were these like summer movies, like they're Jurassic huge Park, blockbusters. Terminator, yeah. like this is going to Independence Day. Like, yeah, this is going to take over the summer. And like they had the big trailers with the big uh, trailer movie voice guy. <laughs> like you knew this was that was going to be the movie of the summer that everybody was going to talk about. And I think this is like a, a correct choice. And it also sort of cements it starts off Bruce Willis's mm-hmm. like like escalation into like the the Start. dude, the action yeah. movie dude, and yeah. everything. And so it's like you you kind of started off with this, but then. 
like just a few years ago, he did another Die Hard and stuff. And, and, Which is and insane, sadly, we right? won't see any more movies from him anymore. But we we can still watch these movies and be like, yeah. I was juiced. I was watching it. I was like, <laughs> I, was, I was like tired from a long day and everything. And I was like sitting there. I was like, this is a good ass movie. <laughs> yeah, it gets you like, that's the crazy thing about movies from 80s, 90s, like action movies. Like they feel or they felt more exciting. Like. You watch an action movie now, and, and we've talked about it before, but it's a lot of cuts. Like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. you got to cut to this close up, to this close up, to, ooh, here's some action. So you get to see the camera move a little bit. This was a lot of like static. There was some movement, but you were able to kind of sit with things as they played out. Like, even that elevator scene, like, you got to sit and watch as that played out. Yeah. And like, there's a lot of sequences that take their time. And, mm-hmm. I think one of the, like you bring up pacing quite a bit, and I think yeah. this is a movie that I believed was paced very well, and also like building that tension, building that yeah. like that like you're, you're waiting for that time where like the the big bad dude or the mm-hmm. the dudes are gonna come Tons. in and be like you know that those are the bad guys, yeah. and they come in perfectly. Like their entrance is like exactly what you feel like that yep. an entrance for like a dude that's going to steal whatever he start wants shooting. from this building. <laughs> yep. Everybody get down and start shooting. Yeah. And so it's like, and to go back to your question about like, is this a Christmas movie? Like all throughout the movie, there's subtle, like low yeah. level orchestra level Christmas mm-hmm. music. And so it's like, even during the times where you, you forget that this is a Christmas movie, there's that, reminder kind of back that it's it. there yeah. yeah so i was like man i was like there's like it's weird watching this movie at a like at a like with a different like context of us trying to like think of like how good this movie is yeah so yeah it was fun but it's still like my, my only gripe is i don't think it should have been two hours i think they could have cut out some some scenes in that movie it was it was long i could agree I with enjoyed you it. yeah I agree where like you start the movie and it's like two hours. You're like, Oh man, yeah. like that's not like for like an action movie. You're like looking for like an hour and a half to like hour and a half, hour 45. Like, even, mm-hmm. yeah. But I saw two, like it was two and some change. And I was like, Ooh, that's a, it's a hefty one. But I think like, I think the beginning, like all like the, the, the build up, the build up, yeah, probably could have been cut down a little bit more if, like, maybe the dude, like, look or like whoever directed this movie, like, look back on yeah. it, like, all right, maybe, maybe the the beginning, we could have cut down a little bit, but I, it adds to it. Yeah, I think some of the scenes, my like, most of my notes are like just bad mouthing Carl Winslow, the the cop. <laughs> I know it's not his name in this movie, but I just kept <laughs> referencing in my notes is him being Carl Winslow. <laughs> Some of those scenes, I was like, okay, he's he's in this movie a little too much. And the fact that <laughs> the funniest thing in this movie to me was the fact that he looked like 45, but he was about to have his first child. Like he, <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was like, because like... <laughs> he emphasized it. I'm like, I know even Family Matters. What? Oh, Family he's... Matters. Was, I don't know if Family Matters was out yet at that point, but. Uh, no, probably not, be. right? No, it had I don't to know. be. Where's my phone at? I'm going to look it up right now. But yeah, he looked really old, ready to retire. Yeah. They already put him on a desk duty, but for another reason, as you yeah. find out in the movie. But but yeah, but then he's having just, his first shot. <laughs> isn't that the MO of LAPD, though? Like, well, he yeah. just fit, yeah, he fit what LAPD does. <laughs> Especially in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I... Stop talking. I'm trying to look up this family matter so I can confirm when. Yeah. Oh, it started in 89. Wow. So he okay, wasn't Carl so Winslow yet. It's not. It's but after. now it's like synonymous, right? It's like you yeah, don't see him cast. as anything else. <laughs> yeah, typecast. Like, come on. I, I don't know. I, I think the best thing I loved about this movie, and it kind of goes to the beginning, where mm-hmm. it, it, it's like more of like setting the tone where – the the director and the cinematographer like spent all this time kind of building up like there's these trucks kind of like going into the parking lot mm-hmm. and showing as to like the dynamic between the ceo of this of this place or like the the head guy and then like yeah. the douchebag dude that makes the deals and sorts coke yeah. and everything and then the, the one that the got wife. blasted yeah, yeah so the, the guy that like decided it. to take 
matters in his own hands. I can handle this and just gets blasted. I'm like, yeah, you deserve that, dude. <laughs> but what I what I love the most, and you, you're kind of watching it, is that um, the progression of like it, the the changes in the colors. Where like mm. the first like 10, 15 minutes, it's orange all over the place. But you see lands later in the day, the sun is setting, and so there's always that orange kind of hue on everything. And then it progresses throughout the night because he's there and it makes he's sense. There he's day, there yeah. for a nighttime kind of gathering and stuff. He just yeah. flew in from New York. So I, I like that because it sets the tone. It sets yeah. the time period to the time, the timing of this movie. And, it, and then it's pitch black for the rest of the movie in terms of like yeah. the, the, the daylight and all that the stuff. Night so. fighting and everything. Yeah. So. I was like, I was so amazed by that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about that until you said that. That was that was a hell of a night, though. Like <laughs> to think about it in that context, that's a hell of a night. Like you watch it and you understand, like okay, this is a one day thing, but it's like, man, he went through hell and back in a night. And then the the limo driver was chilling <laughs> right. the entire time, having the <laughs> night of his life. John is like damn near dying upstairs and the limo driver is chilling with alcohol no and uh, stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know until the end. <laughs> I don't know. What what'd you what you find as like the best thing you like or like what you like the most about this movie? Uh I like the limo driver. He was cool as hell. <laughs> but I liked I just like I like John's tenacity. Like he had he had a had it set in his mind that he wanted to make sure his ex-wife, wife, wife, whatever, uh, was safe. And he was going to do whatever it took to stop these guys and to make sure she was safe. So I enjoyed like watching that progression of him trying to figure out, okay, I'm by myself. What am I going to do? These police officers don't understand that I'm on their side trying to, trying to help. Yeah. So how do I get them on my side and also save all these hostages? So like I enjoyed watching that progression. Yeah, it was interesting because like you see him like when he begins to notice what's going on, he hears the gunshots mm-hmm. and, and all that stuff, and you you would expect any normal Joe Schmo to like like oh I have a gun I'm gonna run out there too yeah and everything and be like hey stop this but he like do analyzes that. what's going on yeah. and he's like I have to let my wife go and be this hostage because i need to figure out the whole rest of the thing Mm -hmm. and so it's like you're you're almost like like we always talk about like movies where like it it places you with the main character Mm -hmm. in the movie like you're almost kind of like deducing what's going on with him at the same time you're like finding out key situations with him like when the dude gets shot for like when he's trying to figure out like the the head Wheeling guy's like dealing. yeah like what what do yeah. you know well like the 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 head guy where he's like like what do you want from me like what, what are you oh, trying gotcha. to do and everything yeah. and it's like like well we're trying to like steal this stuff we need this code yeah. and everything and, and so you're finding out that like all right well like that guy wasn't even necessary that's why he killed him and everything so it was interesting yeah i, don't know, I guess like I, with like shortening the movie up a little bit i can't think of anything else the 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 structure of the the story the 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 villain characters like it, hey, granted like you're talking about typecasting with Carl Winslow yeah. like you see uh the dude that plays Professor Snape and yeah. but then <laughs> but then I I like Patty was like oh I see Snape where it's yeah. like okay I see Snape also. But I see this guy Hans, see Hans and you see yeah. why he possibly got Snape afterwards because yeah, Hans it's was like, a badass. Yeah, <laughs> the way he tricked John when he was outside on the roof, I was like, okay, Hans, like all right. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy to put like a little American accent and play, yeah, play quick. Scared. I was like, man, he finessed him quick. <laughs> but yeah, I think it, it was a it was a very simple story done well. Right. Yeah. Very yeah, it's easy not complex. to watch. No, like very easy to follow, very easy to watch, and they added enough action to it to make it interesting. And enough to like make it like it seems fairly realistic. I guess like yeah. not everyone's going to be going like they're I don't know, but 
it seemed like, all right, this dude's in a tough situation. And what do mm-hmm. you do? And you're also a cop. Yeah. And I'm assuming most people would be like, oh, you're a cop from a different state. So you really don't have to do anything. But like, he's like, well, my wife is a part of this. Exactly. <laughs> so he needs to step up anyways. But yeah. he's not a superhero where like he still leads. He still has to like deal with all this stuff and everything. You mean he's not his character from Unbreakable? But it, <laughs> that'd be hilarious <laughs> if it's like <laughs> M Knight's like walking around in the background. <laughs> He's a security guy. Like, uh... <laughs> I don't know. I I wanted to ask you. It's like, all right, like we we have no clue about like what to do in this situation. None yeah. of us, not um, no. none of us on this car, or like even Patty or anything. But like, what what do you think is? The way, like, because they showed an emphasis on, like, that that deputy chief of police. Like, he's like, we're going to send in all the people. We're going in there and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, which is and, stupid. Yeah, so, like, what is the And then the FBI the guys were dumb as hell, too. <laughs> Those guys were, like, gung Stupid ho, FBI like, guys. Like, they're yeah. in Vietnam again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just get in the helicopter. Get in the chopper. And it's like, come on, dude. Come on. No. Relax. But, yeah, like, what, what is what is the, like, especially a high rise. Like. Yeah. Like we come from big cities, yeah, yeah. We come from big cities, so there's high rises everywhere. But like, if the twentieth floor, this is the thirtieth floor, yeah. And what do you do? Like, I guess you kind of like give them what they want, and then see if you can get them later, I guess, or something. Or that's tough. Like, I think you would need someone in the building to kind of get a better understanding of where they are. Like what John, like John was in the building, and he was able to kind of figure out, like, okay. I'm on this floor. They're probably a few floors down and walkie talkie and figuring out, okay, this is how many of them are, are in there. So I, I think you would have to have someone in the building somehow, some way like infiltrating and figuring out, okay, this is where they're at. This is how we're going to attack. Like you can't do it from outside the building. Do sure. a better job than what they did where it's like, they like yeah. showed no the helicopters. Cards that they're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep some stuff in your pocket. Don't just start divulging everything. Yeah. And no Have someone going through the back or something. Yeah. yeah. No helicopters. Yeah. That's why I was like, I was like, all right, like no one knows what the hell to do in that situation, but like it only worked out because John McLean was up there. Yeah. <laughs> only because of John. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. It, in terms of the grand scheme of things, this is a very 80s, 90s film. Yeah. Uh, it still looks amazing. I think it's it because great. it's film. film. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be that. And like the yeah. color, like I was watching on like a janky TV and all that stuff, but still HD. And it was like, it looked amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but like, who do you recommend this to? Because like we have so many choices of action movies and stuff yeah. and things of like actual superheroes that have all the powers in the world. This is a normal dude that just kind of gets through a day. <laughs> no, but I think it's action movie lovers. Like it's, I think it's as simple as that. Anyone that enjoys action movies, you have to kind of start with the blockbusters, even though it's an older film. Like if if someone's a diehard, and I, sorry <laughs> to bring up the title, but if someone's a diehard action movie fan, they would want to start, they should start with older films first to see like where it all begins and then get to the newer stuff because a lot of the the older action films are better than this the new shit that's coming out like yeah. i'd rather watch i'd rather watch die hard or heat versus a lot of the action movies that are out now kingsman is different i love kingsman so i won't put that in that category but but there's a different feel to them, I think. Like, like yeah. because a lot of times they didn't They're have grittier. so much, yeah, so much CGI yeah. to like kind of like. There's some points in the movie like he's hanging off the side of a building, like you know that's CGI he's and all like, that stuff. Yeah. So it's like, but there's other things that like there's explosions coming out. That, that's probably some real explosions and everything. Yeah. So, so like this, it looks more realistic i guess yeah. compared to the the but then with like the kingsman i guess it's like it, the the tone of that movie is kind of somewhat unrealistic you kind of already mm-hmm. kind of set the the tone of like oh you're not looking for like oh this is like a dude that like is just 
got stuck in the wrong place. Like these people yeah. put themselves in the wrong place, basically. So that's the truth. Yeah, and they're spies too. So yeah, yeah. so they're gonna they it's gonna be off the to. wall and everything and, yeah. and all that. So, but I yeah, it's like I guess anybody that loves heat and everything, but and those those action blockbusters from the early nineties mm-hmm. to late late eighties, like what we just kind of like watched with Die Hard. But I think anybody that kind of watches action movies today and are kind of bored yeah. of the unnuanced, like this is yeah. a simple story. But I think some like like I think Fast and Furious turned into like it's just the oh, same gracious. story all the time. And those are like action blockbusters. Like, those are garbage. Yeah. So it's like if you if you want to have something that's different from like the 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 stuff that's coming out on a regular basis with Fast and Furious. It's cookie cutter. Everything's the same. Everything's pretty much telling the same story. They try to believe that they put a little like emphasis on like some changes in the story. Yeah. But it never works out and it never like it takes away from everything. You're like, all right, I'm not watching. This is an action movie because this seems like like anybody could do it. Like you just replace Bruce Willis, John McClane with anybody else and you're like yeah. that's me i can do that and everything, yeah. which is never the the best idea you're not going to be in a bank robbery and you're like i'm going to be Bruce Willis now <laughs> yeah because i watched uh i watched the fall guy that's the new okay. uh gosling ryan, ryan, gosling, ryan, is yeah. ryan gosling and uh emily blunt and that was very fast and furious-esque like they played up the action and it's cgi there's a love story involved it's like i just want an action movie i don't need all this extra lovey-dovey stuff included and this is all about family that's great that can be make a rom-com like i want to see an action movie like the gray man gray man came out like, actually that was two pretty years good ago. that was good that was an action movie there was no extras to it mm-hmm. so i want to see more action movies like that i don't need extra shit involved in my action movies which is what a lot of these new action movies do. Yeah, they put like a little bit too much character yeah. in their characters. It's like yeah. John, right, John McClane is a New York PD. Yes. And that's it, basically. Yes. <laughs> and he's trying With to a fix tank his top marriage. And some jeans. Yeah. <laughs> There's a love story, but it's at the very, very back of this movie. Yeah. And just the fact that she's alive at the end, she's like, Oh yeah, yeah I'll take you back. I'm I'm Mrs. McClane now. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, earlier in the movie you didn't like me at all, lady, but now like, if there's a reward for what my husband did, I'm uh, I'm the wife. <laughs> walking through a bunch of glass and a tea, like a tank top, saving the, the, the tower. Like, now you want to be my wife again. Come on. Yeah, there you go. But what, what, what did you end up rating this movie? Uh, three and a half. I, don't, I think I actually have to input it. Yeah? I probably should give it higher because I did it, I did really enjoy it. But three and a half. I gave it a four and a half. I I, I believe that this was like a, a a very solid movie, in terms of like, like if you actually don't even see it in the context of like, uh, I'm trying to see what I gave it. Uh, mm, so you might not have given it a four and a half. But I did. Uh huh. I know uh, I didn't even rate mine yet, so I'm, I'm I can always it put it as a four. <laughs> I may give it a four since I haven't put my rating on Letterbox yet. But. But it's a solid movie because it's like they build a lot of context with like what's going on. You know that he's a New York PD officer because he's coming in from New York. And then they build that tension of like there's this build up to like what's going to happen. And I think all those kind of things put together out of the context of that this is an action movie. This is a very good movie, I think. Uh, yeah. and, and so I think anybody can watch this movie and be like, hey, this is actually well put together. The cinematography is pretty good and everything. Bruce Willis as a person seems like uh, a, a very kind of relatable person, I guess, in, in that yeah. context. But uh, yeah, I was like, I was very surprised at like how good this movie holds up. Also, it, I That's think it, that, part, that yeah. also is because I think it, the, the movie itself is good. And yeah. everything, so it's like that. I think that's why it holds up pretty well, also. So we'll see. This was the original uh, East Coast West Coast beef. <laughs> I guess so, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's coming on their turf and uh-huh. showing how the PD could, do, how the police department should work. <laughs> this is what NYPD does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kai, you want to take us out? 
Yeah, thanks for joining us for another episode of Saturday Night Popcorn. I'm Kai. And I'm Jason, and we'll be back next week with another one. And please remember to like and subscribe to Saturday Night Popcorn. Uh, if you like this movie, if you dislike the movie Die Hard, um, let us know in the comments. Uh, but we'll be watching more action movies uh, like this one for the rest of the month.